Hey kids, Miss Kulkani here. In this video, we'll continue with liquids and solutions. And in fact, we will talk about some rules for solubility for ionic compounds. Now remember, for ionic compounds, the rules for solubility are not extremely clear. We have a chart which we're going to use. The main thing to keep in mind is the solubility depends on the relative strength of the interaction between solute and solvent. So, one thing to keep in mind is ionic compound will only dissolve in polar solvents like for example water. They will not dissolve in any non-polar solvents. And then we are going to predict the solubility using a special solubility rules chart which is right here. The first thing is universal solvent. What is it? It is simply water. Now why water is considered universal solvent? One main thing is water is a polar solvent and we already mentioned that water makes a very good solvent for ionic compounds. Let's move on to predicting the solubility for these compounds. So using our solubility chart, if you look at sodium and chlorine, that will fall under aqueous. Look at for bromide. In case of bromide, silver comes as an exception. So that means it will be insoluble making this as a solid. Let's look at nitrate and what do we have? All nitrates are soluble so it will be aqueous. For calcium hydroxide it will be aqueous. When we come to magnesium carbonate, what do we have for carbonate? That comes out to be a solid and when we talk about barium sulfate, barium is an exception which we get so that will be solid. So it is simply looking at the chart and predicting the solubility for each of the compound. So what exactly we mean by the term dissociation? It means splitting a compound into corresponding ions. So if you have a compound like A and B, when that dissociates, we end up getting a positive ion A plus and a negative ion or ions depending upon how many we have a negative ion with B negative one. Now all ionic compounds will dissociate when they are soluble, when they are in solution. So for example if you have NaCl as a solution in aqueous form then that will dissociate as Na positive and Cl minus and we will get all these into ionic forms. If we have an acid or base which is strong, we still will have dissociation. For example, if it's HCl, we dissociate into hydrogen ion and chloride ion. And if it's a strong base, for example, NaOH, anything with hydroxide will be considered as a strong base that will dissociate as sodium ion and hydroxide ion. Now the key word to remember is if it's a strong acid or base we will have almost complete dissociation. If it's an ionic compound if it's soluble we will have complete dissociation. If it is a weak acid or weak base for example if we have acetic acid then that will be dissociating only partially. We won't have 100% dissociation into ions and if it's covalent compounds they can never ever form ion so dissociation will never take place. Let's take these examples for dissociation and nitric acid is a strong acid HNO3 is the formula for acid we always refer to acids as AQ because they are soluble in water and when acid dissociates, what do we get? We get hydrogen ion and the other part is nitrate ion. 
so we end up having NO3 negative 1 and this is positive 1 and both can be written as aqueous because they are ions let's look at the other example sulfurous acid that is H2SO3 and when that dissociates we end up getting a splitting pattern with hydrogen and sulfide now how many hydrogen ions will be formed there are two so we will get two hydrogen ion each with charge positive one and we will have one sulfate ion with the charge of negative two and they will be again aqueous ions let's do one more example strontium hydroxide that is SR and we need two hydroxide so when that dissociates we get strontium ion which is positive 2 and we end up having two hydroxide ion and both will be of course aqueous ions let's talk about electrolytes what is an electrolyte it is a substance which when dissolved in water can dissociate into corresponding ions and it can conduct electricity that is the simple definition for an electrolyte now how does it work it actually involves it requires movement of electrons and that takes place if you have ions so which are the compounds which will be electrolytes if you have soluble ionic compounds they will be always strong electrolytes because they will dissociate completely if you have strong acids or bases remember they will also ionize just like strong ionic compounds so they will be also strong electrolytes then if you have weak acids or weak bases they will be weak electrolytes because they will have only partial dissociation if you have a molten ionic compound and also metals they will still conduct electricity even if they are not dissolved but usually we don't call them as electrolytes because metals are not forming really an ion but they will be still conducting electric current then there are covalent compounds and remember they cannot form ions so they will never be electrolytes and then we talk about some ionic compound which are insoluble which don't dissolve in water they can never ever be electrolytes so by using these rules we can easily predict what exactly is going to happen with each one of these so let's complete this table using some simple things which we learn for each of the compound that is the formula which we have you can easily figure out if the compound is ionic or it is covalent ammonium carbonate has positive negative part so it's ionic you can figure out this is barium so it's ionic magnesium again is a metal so it will be ionic calcium will be a metal so it's ionic look at HCl we have hydrogen and chlorine this is hydrochloric acid and this is one of the strong acid so I'm going to put acid and I'm going to put their strong then this is acetic acid it is a weak acid so remember it will dissociate only partially then we come up with methane and if you remember methane is a covalent compound ammonia there is no metal in that so again that's a covalent compound now let's look at the solubility if it's an ionic compound we are going to predict solubility using the solubility chart so when we look at the chart this is soluble this is not soluble we get all the other ones here soluble if it's an acid it will be always soluble so we get that one if it if it's suppose a covalent compound we use 
the Lewis dot structure, and I can tell you right now, methane will have a formula A, B, 4, and it is symmetrical. That means it is a non-polar compound, and water is polar, so it will be insoluble. So I'm going to put no there. And then we have ammonia. Ammonia will have a BX structure there. There is an extra pair of electrons. That means it will be polar and that will be soluble. Now let's look at if it is electrolyte or not. Both methane and ammonia, both are covalent compounds. And according to our rules, what did we say? Covalent compounds can never ever form ions. So they will not be electrolytes. So I'm going to say no for these two. Also, a substance must be soluble in order for it to form ions and we have barium sulfate which is insoluble. So this cannot form ions. So it will not be an electrolyte. Now the rest of those will be electrolytes for sure. They can ionize. But will they be strong or will they be weak? If it's an ionic compound and if it's soluble, it will be a strong electrolyte. So I'm just going to put strong electrolyte as S and E. If it is magnesium nitrate, again, I can say that is a strong electrolyte. This will be a strong electrolyte. When we come to acids, if it's a strong acid, it will dissociate completely. So that will make it as a strong electrolyte. And if it's a weak acid, that will be a weak electrolyte. So look at this. We are easily able to predict based upon the solubility whether the compound will be an electrolyte or not. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you in next video. Until that time, bye-bye.